Hi, I'm AJ. Now, did you sign a death pledge or a mortgage? The myth of why you're not a homeowner. What's up, YouTube? This is AJ, and I really appreciate you taking the time to click on this video and watch it as well. So if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also hit that like button because you're gonna like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about home ownership and how the American dream of owning a home is kind of a nightmare for some people. And in a sense, you're not really a homeowner. So the majority of people in America that say that, you know, they own a home they don't technically own their home yet. So true home ownership is once you've paid off your mortgage. So if you still owe the bank or you still owe someone from a private loan that allowed you to, to get the home, technically you're not a homeowner yet. And so many, there are lots of people that will go, they'll get a 30 year mortgage and they may not pay it off in that 30 years. So the mortgage company before the 30 years is up, they've already made their money the banks normally get about double what the sticker price was when you, you know, when you got your loan for the home. And so they've already made their money back. You don't have to actually go the whole 30 year period for the bank to, to make their money. And in fact, many of the banks, they've already sold your loan to another company and they, they don't have anything to do with it at that point. So true home ownership is once you've actually paid it off. So even if you go out and you get a 30 year loan, that doesn't mean that you have to take 30 years to pay off your home. You could pay it off in as fast as you want. It could be five years, 10 years, 20 years. I mean, it really depends on how much you can afford to pay extra on your home mortgage. So what we're actually trying to do as a family, we're trying to pay off, we have a 30 year mortgage. We're gonna try to pay it off as fast as we can. We have a goal of paying it off in less than 10 years. And currently we're still on track to do that. But you know, with things that come up in life, that could change, but we're hoping that we can stick to this and we'll be able to pay it off. But one of the biggest factors in determining whether or not you will eventually pay off your home or to pay it off faster is how much income you have and how large of a loan you got when you first signed for your mortgage. Now, when you first look at a mortgage, when you go to the bank, the bank will tell you what you can afford. So according to the bank, what you can afford may not necessarily need to be what you actually pay for. So the bank may tell you that, okay, you can afford to buy a $300,000 home or a $150,000 home. Now you can take a look at your own budget and your finances and determine based on your income and you know if you're by yourself or your family income, if you're married, uh, you can determine how much money can I put on top of the normal mortgage after I'm paying home insurance, if there's PMI, how much is that? You know, once all of that is included in your mortgage, how much on top of that can you pay? And sometimes it only takes a couple hundred dollars to actually pay it off just even five years sooner. Any extra money that you put towards it is reducing the amount of interest that you're gonna pay over the life of the loan. And so any extra dollars that you can put towards it also reduces the amount of time it will take you to pay it off. So if you can technically afford to pay $2,000 a month for a home, but you don't have any other money left over and you have to use credit cards, and if something were to happen, you don't have enough savings to survive, you know, two, three, even six months, then do you really need a $2,000 mortgage? No, you can probably go out and get a mortgage that's gonna cost you half the price. Maybe it's $1,000 and that $300,000 loan, or yeah, that $300,000 loan, you could just get a $150,000 home and you can pay it off twice as fast because you have that extra $1,000 that you could actually put towards it. And now you can still pay $2,000 a month if you choose, but if you ever come up on hard times, you know, you know, or you know, if for some reason something comes up and you can't put that whole $2,000, you're still able to afford your $1,000 mortgage and you can use that extra thousand dollars for any emergencies or any you know issues with your car that you have to fix or if you have an injury or whatever the emergency may be 
you'll have that extra cushion of even if it's a hundred dollars two hundred dollars or even a thousand dollars you want to have some type of cushion to where if you need to pay for an emergency you can and the banks are banking pun intended that you don't actually pay off your mortgage you know why else would someone give you a mortgage for 30 years and then they sell it to another company so that they can get their money and they're done so that bank is already done the other bank or even that bank if they decide to keep your loan for the entire 30 year period they don't expect you to pay it off because most people don't end up actually paying off their homes some people will get home equity loans or they will refinance later down the road and that ends up increasing the the amount to the original mortgage that they got from the bank and also extending the amount of years that they'll actually have to pay their mortgage so the bank doesn't care whether or not you actually end up paying it off completely in fact if you don't that allows them to then sell the home to someone else if there's ever like a big situation like uh, a market crash of course the banks are losing out short term on that money as well but many of these banks that went through the financial crisis they survived and they're still selling homes to people today and they're still making lots of money off of these mortgages and the way that you can make this work for you is if you get that 30-year mortgage you know you're getting a lower interest rate you have a lower monthly payment that you're required to pay but you can put any extra funds that you have towards the mortgage and that will will allow you to pay off that mortgage faster and that way you become a true home owner so again home ownership you're not an owner until you actually pay off all of your debt and the bank gives you the note that says you are the owner of this property now when you look at the etymology of the word mortgage you can break the word into two parts so there's mort m-o-r-t which means deaf and gage g-a-g-e which means pledge so a mortgage literally means a deaf pledge now if you think about the fact that a study was done in 2013 and it showed that only 20 percent of homes were owner occupied and did not have a mortgage um, another study that was done showed that only about a third of people ever end up paying off their homes and so if the banks are banking on the fact that you're gonna die literally like you're going to die before you ever pay off your mortgage who's the real winner there the banks whoever you're getting your loan from they're the true winners when you don't pay off your mortgage so they don't have an incentive to offer you a loan of something that they expect you to actually pay within a 30-year period so although they may say that you can afford a certain amount of home you should always go less than whatever the bank says and so there's a quote from the millionaire next door and I'm paraphrasing but they basically said that if you ever want to be wealthy you should never purchase a home that's twice as much as your annual household income so the income that you and if you're married your spouse brings in you multiply that by two and your home should not cost more than that so if you're single and you make fifty thousand dollars your home shouldn't cost more than a hundred thousand dollars why because you'll never be wealthy if the majority of your money on a data a monthly or weekly basis is going towards paying off that mortgage and you need to have a cushion to make sure that you know if something ever happens one you want to have an emergency fund but two you want to be able to pay for that mortgage and you want to be able to pay an additional amount that way you can actually pay it sooner than the 30-year period now just because you got a 30-year loan doesn't mean you have to actually pay it over the course of 30 years now there are some banks that they may charge a penalty if you pay off your home early or within a certain amount of years of that mortgage but for the most part you can actually pay it off and there's no there's no, nothing really stopping you other than one you being able to do it by not having a mortgage that you can't really afford just because you have the money doesn't mean you can afford it now there are many reasons someone may not be able to pay their home off in 30 years usually it's a change of family dynamics so you know if someone gets divorced um, you know or if someone passes away in the family that's one reason that you know it may be difficult for someone to pay off a 30-year mortgage 
on their own. So that's also something you want to think about. If one person were to pass away or if something happened to one person to where they can't work anymore or they can't make as much money, are you able to afford that home off of one person's salary? So that's one way you can decide how much of a loan you're gonna get. You can base it on one person's salary, whether it's the person that makes the least amount or the person that makes the most amount of money. But you don't wanna base it on both salaries because then the bank is gonna offer you a loan that you really truly can't afford or you can't afford to pay it over a 30 year period unless something changes drastically in the incomes of you or your spouse. And so that's the second main reason that, you know, people don't pay off their homes. It's because they've chosen a home um, a mortgage that's cost too much. The bank told you you could get a $300,000 loan, but you really, in order to afford and live and be able to save money, it's probably best that you get a $150,000 loan. But because they told you that that's what you can get, and now you can probably move into this really nice neighborhood, you know, depending on where you live, because in some neighborhoods or in some cities, $300,000 may just be a shack. If you go to like San Francisco or LA or a place like that, maybe even New York, now it may not actually be a shack, I'm being facetious. Uh, maybe in San Francisco it might actually be a shack. But the point is that you know you don't wanna pay more than you can truly afford, especially as far as being able to add additional funds, that way you can pay off your home sooner. Last but not least, another way that people don't pay off their homes in that 20 or 30 year period, whichever type of mortgage you get, is because they refinance. So they take basically a second mortgage out on their home because they either wanna try to uh, reduce the payments by extending to another 30 year loan. So you've had the loan for 10 years and now you wanna lower the monthly payments. So now you extend it for another 30 years and now you do that repeatedly and eventually you never end up paying it off because you know the mortgage goes on and on and something happens to someone in your family and you never actually become a true homeowner. So is your mortgage a mortgage? It is a death pledge. Or are you actually going to end up paying off your home before you or a family member passes away? That would be the best thing to do. First, choose a mortgage that doesn't cost too much. That way you can add more money to it and you can pay it off sooner. And then that way, if anything were to happen, any changes in your family dynamics or in your work situation or whatever the case may be, that won't put you in a spot where you lose your home or you have to refinance and you end up extending the amount of time that you actually pay for your mortgage. So this was all about the myth of home ownership and how you're not truly a homeowner until you've paid off all of your home. Uh, if you guys agree with me or if you disagree, I'd like to see your thoughts in the comments below. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's right there below me, right below my head, right over here. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button because you really like this video and also hit that notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Thanks.